I really spent some time thinking about what to do for this video. It's the first Call of the Wild Hunt of 2024, and I wanted to start the year off right. And I got to thinking about the latent trophy cabin and this series that we've been doing of attempting to fill the entire lodge through multiplayer hunts in these videos. And it was something that a lot of you guys were excited for from the moment the lodge came out, as was I. And what better way to start out the year than by making a resolution to complete this lodge, get one diamond or rare in every plaque or platform by the end of the year. By my count, there are eight remaining plaques or platforms we have to fill, and that is including the Troll Roosevelt Elk and the Troll Wild Boar that we have upstairs. Took forever to get that to come up. It was trying to show us the Diamond Rocky Mountain Elk we have, but we're going to head to Hirschfelden as we've been on Leighton Lakes and Silver Ridge Peaks as of late, and we're going to see if we can add to the lodge on our first hunt of the new year. So in this particular server, it is Red Deer drink time and Red Deer are trying to run us over. But I grabbed the M1, I thought it might be fun, and I also thought it would look good with the New Year's material. If you didn't see it in the video where we first used the New Year's cosmetics, it's basically confetti kind of pressed into a stock. And I think it actually works, especially with the New Year metal. I really do like the look of that gun. But, as far as Hirschfelden species that we're still after, I'd like a diamond or rare male European bison. We do have a rare female, but I do want to improve on that. But primarily, fallow deer, roe deer, and then that wild boar that we have to replace. Those are the ones I really want to go after. And pretty soon, it will be Euro bison drink time. We'll start that, get into fallow deer, and go from there. Well, I don't know how we found ourselves in this situation, but there are three aggressive Euro bison just kind of moving our way. So. We've actually got the 10 gauge with slugs, mostly because Euro Bison are kind of easy to follow. So should we spook a level five or a rare or anything like that, we can kind of run up alongside them and get the shot that way. I don't know what that little maneuver was, but I think we got all three in the vitals. And even though it's only a two, we'll avoid shooting him three times. Two of those are down in sight, and I'm not sure where the other one went. It's like the very beginning, by the way, of Euro Bison drink time, and the hope was we could maybe go and sort of look for Fallow and Bison at the same time. There's not too many places where their drink zones overlap, but to the best of my knowledge at least, kind of in the center of the map here in Spreeburg, these kind of areas can have both. So real quick, we'll try to figure out where that third one went, and we'll go and give those spots a look. So the good news is, only had three aggressive ones, therefore didn't have to delete any zones, and hopefully won't get kicked from the server. So naturally, these bison were drinking at the worst spot, and just coming down to this lake actually sent them running. Got a foul deer over on that side, so like I said, a couple of spots that definitely they kind of share drink zones, just not too many. Ideally, because the bison run so slowly, we could at least get eyes on that fallow. That's not the one. However, it is a decent one. But I think we better go and chase the bison. He was up to 125. As a level four, that is not too bad. He's gonna be one of those front two there. He's gonna be the one in the back. And I mean, maybe? I'm only gonna shoot once. If that gets along, we're good. If it doesn't, we can still get closer and potentially save it. And it looks like it is going to need saving. So, question is, where in here has he ended up? It's just a whole mess of bison running around in there. They look like they're trying to go left. Because we hit that one, he probably did run out front. And yeah, he did, but he's, he's not even going down. Interestingly enough, he seems to just be sprinting, which actually would indicate that maybe we got him decently well. That hit him, <laughs> so who knows what's gonna happen? So we'll give him a minute. He's still going down, I'm just not real sure. You know what, probably a better answer to this. Now we can see what happened. I still have to think there was no vital hit. Flesh, I mean, we were close, need to be way further back. And that actually hit him in the leg, all things considered. Not terrible, considering how far that was. And then we finally got a lung with the M1. I wonder why he was running like that then. That was really, really odd. Maybe he did just run extra far when we kind of spooked him again running up alongside him. But anyway, 
It was just a 117, so nothing too special that we wouldn't need to worry about. Well, the good news is, I think we found all the fallow on the map. There's a whole ton of bucks over there, and sadly, none are very big. There is a level 4 there. And I guess we'll go ahead and try to get that. It's nearly 400 meters out. And I think we should be able to do that with the M1. If we go right at the top of the spine, I'm pretty sure that should dip right in to the lungs. And I would say, considering the fact he just took a bite of dirt, we should be good. And actually, maybe this shouldn't be too surprising. He's a little bit bigger up close than he looked at 400 meters. Got him through both lungs at 350. 199.63, our first fallow of the hunt. 88 kilo on the dot as well. So the sad thing is, after passing through a bunch of areas that I thought maybe fallow could be, and there were some smaller bucks, we're at the end of fallow deer drink time. And this is what happens every time we go to Hirschfelden. We get like one fallow deer, and it's, it's like the drink time just flies by. So... Road deer starts to drink fairly soon, and what I think we're going to try to do is maybe go through like some of these fields up around Petershot and stuff just to see if maybe we can encounter some of the fallow deer that are leaving drink zones and going to rest zones. It's just kind of a hope, bit of a long shot, see if we can maybe stumble into one or two more, because unfortunately this time of day they're tough to find. I mean, that's not really what I had in mind, but... We'll take it. I think that was just one of the bugs that was with our level 4. And I don't know why, but they all kind of got stuck in this area. A bunch of does just ran back past us. And look at that. A collectible that I haven't had in all these years. I don't think they do anything anymore, but... Kind of ironic that was a fallow deer shed. Oh, dear. Okay, we have spooked... A level 3 piebald bison. He's 108 to 119... And I don't know the gold requirement. Diamond is 127. How big was the... Okay, he's up to 765, so... I guess there's a chance that's a gold he's got. Some decent mass. But we already learned with the 10 gauge. You gotta be pretty precise. So... They're running a weird direction. I, I guess we can deal with this. But, um... We gotta get up alongside him. And probably we have to just follow them until they get into the open to do that. And then we gotta place the shot perfectly, which is a lot easier said than done. So the whole idea is to kind of stay away from them like this until we get up, maybe even touch ahead of them, but at least broadside. And then we scoot in maybe to whatever range we want to. Did I just see? Okay, those are boar. I mean, that is in theory doable, but we need to be out ahead. We're not doing a quartering shot. I mean, this feels doable, but it's kind of at that same angle the level 4 was when it was going around the lake. We don't want to get much closer than about 50 meters, because if we stay over that range, they'll continue trotting and not sprinting. I mean, this is as good as we're going to get. When we pass this tree, I think we're going to give it a try. I want to make sure we don't... No way. Did he really just turn back around? We want to make sure we don't hit the shoulder. And I mean, if he goes back the other direction, we're still ahead of him. Okay, that's kind of got him running, which is what we don't want to do. But somewhere in here, I think is going to be opportunity. That's going to be him slowing down. Let's see where that hit. My only concern is that was a touch high. So we may... Oh, I think... Uh, I think we got him. We did get him. Okay, I was, I was afraid we hit the vertebrae. And we were going to have to make some kind of miracle follow-up shot, but... That worked so much better than the level 4 earlier. And it was all about taking our time. And obviously, in the case of the level 4, we wouldn't have done that. So, we're going to be upgrading from the piebald female bison that I said I wanted to upgrade from with a piebald male bison. But, what does the metal end up being? He looks pretty decent. I don't know if the curl being so significant helps or hurts us, but we are about to find out. Gold piebald bison. Let's tax that before anything bad happens. Look at that right through the shoulder blade. That 10 gauge slug. Really, really solid. We had a little wiggle room. Not much though. Did we get full quick kill? He was... It says 350. I guess maybe we didn't. 20%. But anyway. I'm actually really impressed with the performance of that 10 gauge slug. So just a look. Nice posies in there. Horn length is perfectly even on either side, and 
When I talked about the curl, that's where I thought maybe it could help us, because there is a long length if you follow that outside curl. Spread obviously is next to nothing, and then circumference. I said as he was running away he had decent mass. That was the, the biggest part of the score, and I think it always is, on the Euro Bison. That is insane. With the shotgun of all things, I almost didn't bring a shotgun. I almost brought like the 338 or the 300, because we do have, I think we have all the small game. We've got a goose, we've got a pheasant, we've got the European rabbits already, but there's always that chance to upgrade, so I wanted to have bird shot in case. Haven't needed it yet, but Slug's got it done. Well, I have no clue if that could be a rare road here. Actually, the fog is kind of fading, so looks pretty much common, but we might as well go ahead and try to get that one. Just because of how fallow deer drink time tends to go, I get the feeling it could go really long between road deer kills, especially just not knowing where a whole lot of them are. I'm imagining there are a bunch of road deer drink zones like along the creeks and stuff, but they are a bit of a challenge to hunt on Hirschfelden, and I think we'd get the same results going a long time between kills. So that one was decent, up to 70, and we'll see what he actually was when we get over there. He is though looking very much common, so not any kind of rare hiding in the mist. However, I think he had a shot at being a gold. He is 67.99 lung liver stomach. A little far back there, but it worked out. And we'll see if we can find a couple more. I don't really know what these ones are doing. Maybe they're just getting to their drinks though, but it's 16.30, like it is late to just be showing up. Either way, I think I think the 22250 can punch through, and it did. The one thing we know about this gun, frontal shots on a lot of class 3 animals at least are a little risky, so I thought maybe the shoulder blade could slow that down, but definitely got through, and brought him down in a matter of maybe 15 meters. So just to look at it, that was another gold by the way, almost exactly the same size. It got into the lung, maybe it'd be nice if he was standing upright, but just barely, so maybe not something we try on a level 3. But good to know it's actually possible. Well, unfortunately, it does appear as though road deer are pretty much done drinking. So I think we'll go ahead and try to get that guy. And that will probably be our last kill. It goes by so fast and it was exactly what we kind of thought was going to happen. But kind of maybe the biggest surprise of all in this series is the mere fact that we've already got our diamond red fox in that lodge. Therefore, even though it is red fox drink time, we really don't have much to go after, so we'll kind of get a very lucky heart shot on that road here, and we'll probably take our piebald bison back to the lodge. I really want to see the difference, and I'll be sure to show it when we take down the female bison. I've felt since the beginning the female bison doesn't take up enough of that plaque to really stand out, and I'm hoping the size difference for the male really will. So a silver that time, and I think we'll go back and find that out. So... Here's what it looks like now with the female bison up there, and let's see what the difference is adding a male instead. We'll have to stand darn near directly underneath it. Oh, that is so much better. That is... I'm so glad we ended up getting that today. It fills that plaque and that space a hundred times better. I really wasn't sure it was going to be that much, but that is pretty significant. And not only that, it ends up being a gold rare. I, I thought of it after the fact. That's our only gold rare Euro Bison ever. We haven't even shot that many. I think we've had maybe one albino. I think that's maybe our second piebald male bison. And I don't know that we've ever had a melanistic, but that really completes that part of the lodge. So I think I said there were eight plaques and platforms yet to fill. None of those were completed today as we added something that we already had a trophy on, but a huge upgrade. And that just makes that part of the lodge look so much better. We've got that Diamond Rocky Mountain Elk from our Silver Ridge Peaks adventures. Now we get to add a gold piebald bison, and what a way to start our New Year's resolution for 2024. Complete the latent trophy cabin with at least a diamond or rare on every single spot. So anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.